Now let's talk about adding and subtracting. To add and subtract rational expressions, the denominators must all be the same. You'll remember when you learned to add fractions, the denominators had to be the same before you could add. And to add fractions that have the same denominator, you just combine the numerators. That's exactly what we're going to do. If the denominators are the same, we can add fractions by combining their numerators. That's the top. After we add the numerators now, we have to check to see if the expression can be simplified. And if it can be simplified, we are obligated to do that. Now, when you're subtracting, remember that you must distribute the minus to all the terms in the numerator of the second fraction. And that's a source of a lot of mistakes. So I'm going to remind you about that as we go. Here are a couple of examples for us to work on. In both of these, the denominators start out already the same, so that's good. If the denominators are the same, then all you have to do is add the tops together and leave the denominator the same. So in this case, 2x plus 8 is just that, just 2x plus 8, and the denominator is x plus 4. Remember, again, when you add fractions together, the denominator stays the same. Now notice that the numerator here, the top, has a GCF of 2. We could factor a 2 out of the top, and we need to do that because if we factor that 2 out of the top, we get 2 times x plus 4. And then, of course, we have an x plus 4 in the denominator. Now, the x plus 4 in the top cancels out the 1 in the bottom, and all we're left with for our final result is just 2. Now, how did I know that I needed to factor that top? Well, I just saw that I could factor a GCF out of the top, and so I did it to see what would happen. And what happened was that I got an x plus 4 in the top and the bottom, and I was able to simplify. Sometimes you can't know until after you factor whether you're going to be able to simplify or not. Let's try part B here. Notice that the denominators are the same, and we're adding. So to add these together, all we have to do is combine like terms in the top. 17y plus negative 10y is going to add up to 7y. And 3 plus negative 18 is going to add up to negative 15. And notice that I already have put my denominator as 9y plus 7. Because again, when you add fractions, the denominators must be the same. And after you add, the denominator will still be the same. Now, we need to ask ourselves if this can be simplified, but the answer is no because there's no GCF in the top and there's no GCF in the bottom, so there's no way to simplify any of this, and this just has to be our final answer. Now, the real question is what happens when the denominators are different? Well, if the denominators are different, we will have to find a common denominator and rewrite each fraction so that all the denominators are exactly alike. So before you can find that common denominator, you've got to factor all of the denominators that you're starting with. And I think the best way to learn how to write the common denominator is just to see it done a few times. So let's just go ahead and jump into a couple of examples. Here we have a practice problem that says add or subtract as indicated, and this is an addition problem, so we'll be adding. Now the first thing I see is that the denominators are not the same. This one is x minus 1. This one is x squared minus 1. So this one needs to be factored. Notice this is a difference of squares, so I'm going to keep everything the same, except I'm going to factor that x squared minus 1 down to x minus 1 times x plus 1. This is a difference of squares, so it factors into a sum and difference of the same two terms. Now let's build our common denominator. This is what you do. You take the factors of the first denominator, which in this case is x minus 1, and then you put that down, and then you go to the second denominator, and any factors that you don't already have, you need to put in there. But notice this x minus 1, I don't have to repeat because I've already got 1. I do, however, need an x plus 1. So notice that this common denominator contains x minus 1, but it also contains everything that you need to make this denominator. So this is the smallest common denominator we can have. 
Now, what would it take to multiply by this denominator so that this denominator looks like this one? Well, we would need to multiply this one by x plus 1. Now, because I've multiplied this one by x plus 1, this one now matches the common denominator, so that's good. But the price of doing that is that I also have to multiply an x plus 1 in the top. Now look at the second fraction. It already has the common denominator, so I don't have to do anything to this one. It's already in good shape. Now these two fractions both have the same denominator, and now all we have to do is combine the tops. But notice that before I can combine the tops, I'll have to distribute this 2x here. So I'm going to go ahead and write one fraction that has the common denominator, and now I'm going to distribute the 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. And then we have a plus negative 4 here, or we could just write minus 4. Now, if this top could not be factored, we would be finished because we have finished now the addition part of the problem. But remember that if the answer we get can be simplified, we have to do that. So the first thing I notice about this answer is that it contains a GCF of 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor a GCF of 2 from the top. So what does it take inside this pair of parentheses so that 2 times this parentheses makes this trinomial we started with. Well, I'd need an x squared and a plus 1x and then a minus 2. Notice that 2 times x squared gives you this, 2 times x gives you this, and 2 times negative 2 gives you this. And of course, the denominator hasn't changed. Now look at this trinomial. Can we factor this trinomial? I think the answer is yes. At least we need to try. So I'm going to keep everything the same except I'm going to break this trinomial down into two binomials. So x squared is going to be x times x. The signs in our binomials need to be different, and 1 times 2 has to make 2, but I need to arrange it actually so the 2 is here so that outer plus inner will add up to a positive 1x. Okay, now the bottom doesn't change. But notice now that we have an x minus 1 in the top and the bottom, so those can cancel out. And now we have 2 times x plus 2 in the top and just x plus 1 in the bottom. And notice that I'm not even going to bother to distribute the 2 here. It's fine to leave everything in a factored form as long as you're in simplest form. So this is fine. We're going to leave it just like this. Okay, here is part B of the example that we're working on. So here we have 5 over 12x squared y minus 11 over 6xy. So since we are subtracting, we need to get a common denominator. So we will build our common denominator. And remember, I told you that to make a common denominator, you use all the factors from the first denominator. So that's going to be 12 and x squared and y. And then you go to the next denominator and you use any factors here that aren't already included here. So the first factor is 6. Well, our 12 already contains a factor of 6. And the next factor is x. And our current common denominator already contains a factor of x. And our next factor is y. And we already have a y. So it looks like this is our common denominator, and it all came from that first denominator. So now let's go ahead and recopy the problem, and let's figure out what we need to multiply by here so that this denominator looks like the common denominator. Well, here we have 6, so I know I'm going to need to multiply by 2 to get 12. Okay, so 6 times 2 is 12. And here we have x, and I know I'm going to need to multiply by x to get x squared. So if you think about 6xy times 2x, that is going to make 12x squared y, which that's what we wanted for our common denominator. But because we multiplied the bottom by 2x, we'll also need to multiply the top by 2x. And now let's see what we've got. So we've got 5 over 12x squared y minus 22x over 12x squared y. 
And we're not going to be able to combine these terms, but we can write this all over one common denominator. So our final answer is going to be 5 minus 22x for the top and 12x squared y for the denominator. And that's all we can do on that one. And here we have part C. So this one says m plus 1 over m minus 1 plus m minus 1 over m plus 1. Now if you look at our denominators, they are different. They are not the same, although they look very similar. This one's m minus 1 and this one's m plus 1. So we're going to need to create a common denominator and make sure that both denominators are the common denominator before we start adding. So each of these denominators only contains one factor, so I'll need my common denominator to contain an m minus 1, and I'll also need it to contain an m plus 1. And this will be our common denominator. Now when we recopy the problem, we'll need to figure out what to multiply by m minus 1 so that it matches this common denominator. And of course you can see that we just need to multiply this by m plus 1. So I'm going to put times m plus 1 here. And notice that I had to put that first one in parentheses. When it was by itself, it didn't need parentheses. But now that we're multiplying it by another binomial, it does need the parentheses. So I put m plus 1 in the bottom, and I'll also have to put m plus 1 in the top. And when you do that, make sure that if there's more than one term that you put parentheses around everything that was already there. And now we're going to do the same thing to the second fraction. So it already has an m plus 1, and it just needs m minus 1. So I'm going to multiply here by m minus 1, and that means I also have to multiply this top by m minus 1. Now that both fractions have the common denominator, we'll need to work out the numerator of each fraction so we can get the terms combined. So I'm going to copy one fraction here, that has the common denominator m minus 1 times m plus 1. Now I'm going to foil these two binomials together and put that here, and then I'm going to put a plus, and I'm going to foil these two binomials together and put that here. So here we go. First times first is going to be m squared. Outer times outer is going to be 1m, and inner times inner is also going to be 1m. So 1m plus 1m is going to make a middle term of 2m and then last times last is going to be plus 1. Okay, now plus, let's do FOIL here. First times first will be m squared. Outer times outer will be minus 1m, and inner times inner will be minus 1m as well. So together they make minus 2m for that middle term, and then last times last is going to be plus 1. And now let's combine like terms in the top and see where we are. So 1m squared plus 1m squared is going to be 2m squared. And then we have positive 2m and minus 2m. So we won't have an m term at all. That would be 0m, and we won't have an m term at all in the final answer. And then 1 plus 1 is going to make 2. So the numerator here is 2m squared plus 2. And then the denominator is m minus 1 times m plus 1. Now, I know that you're probably looking at this numerator and you're saying, well, we could factor out a GCF of 2, and we could. But think about what would we get if we factored out that 2. If we factored out a 2, then the parentheses we would have would say m squared plus 1, and that would not help us cancel anything out. So even though it is possible to do some factoring here, it's not helpful to do it, and therefore we are not required to do it. So we can leave this as our final answer. And let's look at part D. So here we have 3x over x squared plus x minus 12 minus x over x squared minus 16. Now remember, we're subtracting here, so we will need common denominators, but it's impossible to see how to build the common denominator until we get both of these factored. So if we look at the first one, x squared plus x minus 12 is a trinomial. It's going to factor into two binomials. x squared is going to be x times x. The signs in the binomials need to be different so that last times last will make a negative. And then for the 12, I say we use plus 4 and minus 3 so that we get the middle term that we want. Okay, now for the second one, x squared minus 16 
is a difference of squares. So that's going to factor down to x minus 4 times x plus 4. And let's go ahead and build our common denominator. We will need an x plus 4, and we will need an x minus 3. And then when we go to the second fraction, we will need an x minus 4, but we already have an x plus 4 here, so we do not need to repeat this x plus 4. So our common denominator is these three factors here. All right, now let's recopy, and let's see what it takes to make each of these fractions have the common denominator. Okay, this first one already has x plus 4 and x minus 3, so it's going to need x minus 4, and that means we have to put x minus 4 in the top. And this second one already has x minus 4 and x plus 4, so that means it's going to need x minus 3, which means we have to put x minus 3 in the top there. Okay, now be careful when you're distributing because this time we're subtracting, so we're going to need to be very careful and distribute that minus. I'm going to go ahead and recopy one fraction that has the common denominator, and we're going to distribute and copy over here as we go. So 3x times x is going to make 3x squared here. 3x times minus 4 is going to make minus 12x here. Okay, now distributing not just x, but also this minus. Minus x times x is going to make minus x squared here. And minus x times minus 3 is going to make plus 3x here. And now we're ready to combine like terms. Here we have 3x squared and minus 1x squared. That's going to make 2x squared. Here we have minus 12x and plus 3x, so together those make minus 9x. And then, of course, the denominator stays those three factors. And notice that we could factor out a GCF of x here, but if we did that, it would not help us cancel anything from the denominator. So this one is in final form. Now, it happens sometimes that the denominators will be opposites, and when that happens, then all we have to do to change one of the denominators is to multiply the top and the bottom by negative 1 to change the signs in one of the denominators, and then the denominators will be the same. Let's do an example like that. Okay, here we have y over y minus 2 plus 8 over 2 minus y. So notice that these two denominators are not exactly the same, but they are opposites. This one is y minus 2, so the y is positive and the 2 is negative. This one is 2 minus y, so the 2 is positive and the y is negative. If you can recognize that, then it saves you from having to go through the common denominator process. When you have denominators that are opposites, you can make them both the same if you just multiply one of the fractions by negative 1 over negative 1. Remember, negative 1 over itself is equal to positive 1, so we're not really changing the value, we're just going to change the way it looks. So I'm going to leave the first fraction the same, and I'm going to take the second one and multiply it by negative 1 over negative 1. So notice I had to put the 2 minus y in parentheses to make it look right. So here I have negative 1 times the top and negative 1 times the whole bottom. Now watch what happens when we do that. So the first fraction has not changed and we still have a plus. But now the second fraction, we have 8 times negative 1, so that's negative 8. And in the denominator, distributing this negative 1, we're going to get negative 2 plus y. Now these denominators still do not look the same, but they actually are the same at this point, because here we have positive y and minus 2, and here we have minus 2 and positive y. They are the same, they're just not written in the same order. But because they're the same, we can go ahead and combine these into one fraction. And I'll just write this as a denominator of y minus 2. And then when we combine the tops, we're going to get y plus negative 8, which we will write as just y minus 8. And that's all the simplifying we can do there. I feel like some of you are still going to be tempted to try to cancel the y's here or maybe cancel the 8 over 2 and put a 4. But remember, you can't do that because these are not factors, these are terms. Y is a term of the top and a term of the bottom. So these are not available for canceling. 
Now look at part B with me. So here we have m minus 4 over 3m minus 4 minus 5m over 4 minus 3m. And again, notice that our denominators are opposites. Here we have positive 3m and minus 4, and here we have 4 and minus 3m. So they're exactly opposite. In order to fix this, all we have to do is multiply one of them by negative 1 over itself. So I'm going to leave the first one the same, and I'm going to copy the second one, but I'm going to multiply it now by negative 1 over itself. So again, notice that I had to put that denominator in parentheses so that the whole denominator gets multiplied by negative 1. Okay, now the first fraction is still the same, and we still have a minus here. 5m times negative 1 is going to make minus 5m. And in the denominator, did you notice over here that multiplying by negative 1 just changed the sign? So we could have changed the order of the terms if we'd wanted to. So what I'm going to do is as I distribute the negative 1, I'm also going to just reorder it. So instead of putting negative 4 and positive 3m, I'm going to put the positive 3m first and then the minus 4. And that's just so that it looks the same as this other one. Even if I hadn't changed the order, like I didn't change the order over here, it would have still been the same. But now that we know that we can do that, let's go ahead and instead of just distributing, let's go ahead and write it so that it looks like the other denominator, and that'll just make it easier on you. So now, as we put these together, the denominator is 3m minus 4, and our numerators are going to be m minus 4 minus negative 5m. So that's going to make plus 5m. Okay, now combining the tops, 1m plus 5m is 6m, and then we have our minus 4 here, and the denominator is still 3m minus 4. And notice we could factor a GCF of 2 out of the top, but we can't factor anything from the bottom, so there's nothing we can do here that will actually help us reduce, and we're going to say that this is our final form. Okay, I know that we hit a lot of material here in this section. This is something that in an intermediate algebra class we would have normally taken about two weeks to develop and go through it slowly and practice and just learn a little bit at a time, but because of the co-requisite format, you're getting a whole lot of material at one time, and that means that you're going to have to really sit down and practice and work hard to master all of this so that you can use it as we go forward into the regular college algebra curriculum. So good luck. Don't procrastinate. Make sure and get plenty of practice and get with your teacher and get some help if you need to. Good luck.